So I don't mean to boast or show off or anything, but I am now a happy owner of the Vexmith class, which is beyond the same when I think about how I always wanted this weapon since D1, and it only took me 21 runs to achieve it. A fast firing full auto fusion rifle has been a dream for me to have, and tears up everything I use it against in the blink of an eye. Although many people say that the weapon is a tad too OP in PvP, I have not been paying that much attention to it, except for the many teabags I do receive. Whether Bungie nerves it soon or in the future, I want to try and get as much builds around it out as possible, so here we have a very fiery build that is building off the enhanced sterile runes build we did a few weeks back. The idea here is near the same as last time except for this time round we will focus more on becoming a champion to boss the leader with the gear and weapons present. We will also experiment with the elemental time dilation mod to further enhance our frontal might mod to become even more mightier than ever before. Does that make sense? It kind of makes sense in my head when repeating it. So if you're ready to have this second most hottest mixtape from legendary siege breakers once again, then sit back, relax and let my slightly smooth voice entertain you. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. Starting with the subclass, we'll be using Code of Siege Breaker for the active use of all of our abilities and how we'll be able to spread its effects far and wide through a single use of a sunspot. Our abilities will allow us to create wells, sunspots and continuous damage buff all round that we can feed directly back into our secondary and heavy. Although sunspots are more designed for staying in one spot, Actively, we don't have to abide by this rule as we can simply empower ourselves the moment we pass through one and then just use our weapon to net a kill and thus create another set of sunspots to pass through and mess around from there. As the Vex has a catalyst that once complete, we're going to use it even more damage each time to get a kill, pairing it with the Seed Breaker class and sunspots in general would offer a lot more feedback and support for consistently upkeeping your damage and basically melting through the majority of combatants you face. Add in Fortum Might for that sweet damage buff and the Path of the Burning Steps for escalating damage and everything you touch will turn into dust. Unfortunately I don't have the catalyst just yet but I will do so in the future, but this won't affect the build too much. What I do plan to do with the Vex is make full use of the Elemental One mod so we can keep our abilities going which will then affect our subclass perks such as the Sunspots and thus create a full package of Empowerment, Health Regeneration and of course Quick Super Regeneration. Just like the Devil's Ruin, the Vex will be the main focus of the build and will be the main source of energy for supporting the rest of the setup. Considering how powerful the Code of Seed Breaker is, the whole of the build becomes a great source of warmth for other players to lean in and rely on when needed most. In fact, because of the concept of the build is very easy to understand, we could opt into using Code of the Fire Forge instead for the Hammer Strike debuff on top of our other debuffs provided or use the Phoenix Cradle Exotic instead of the Path of the Burning Steps if you wish to be more of a supportive player. The options here are unlimited as long as you are happy to try and experiment with first. Now when it comes to weaponry, it's probably best to go with a heavy hit inside for the setup considering how much buffs and empowerments will be coming your way. Primary for example can be a shotgun such as the Wrist Walker with surplus and vorpal weapon and although the weapon seems more better fitted for PvP environments, it can still be used in PvE with good effectiveness. Being a lightweight frame means that users can zip through combatants much more quicker compared to not having one available, which also means we can make full use of our sunspots with your grenades or melee to get a quick boost when moving from one spot to another. It also has a built in Vorpal for 15% champion to boss damage effect when being used, hence once we stun a champion in place we can easily zip through to them, hit them with our melee and then finish with a weapon which of course should create a sunspot for us to make full use of. Very hard hitting with a good reload speed and handling that we can easily rely on when within close range fighting. For second G, we have the Vex Myth class, which of course will be carrying in the build from subclass down to the mods being used. As a full auto fusion rifle crossbreed, it can hit extremely hard on its own or with other mods and perks attached and can absolutely destroy many combatants the moment we get all of our buffs going in a matter of seconds. The weapon does also come with a secondary feature called Temporal Unlimiter which after reaching 5 stats can turn the weapon into a high power linear fusion. You'll be able to get 3 shots off before needing to build the stack up again, however these shots alone upon a position hit can eat through combatants health in 1-3 to three hits depending on where you face and hit them. If we have all of our stacks up and running and all of our other buffs as well, I can easily see the linear side of the fusion hitting around 50, 70 to even 100k if the stars align. 
adding the part of the structure mod for a 35% debuff, and we could potentially go even higher. This alone makes the Vex even more deadlier to face in PvP and very useful for endgame content in all PvE scenarios. For Heavy, I chose to use the Hazen Vengeance rocket launcher with surplus and full weapon, and as a solo weapon, it will receive the same buffs and benefits that our Vex will also be receiving. Easily, you can use this to take out the majority of champions or ultras in one shot if I direct hit lands onto them, but this of course will vary depending on the type of commanders you face. Rockets in general are very powerful now because of the past rocket buff they received, so now is a great time to earn a few hard hitting rockets for whatever comes next in Destiny. Alternatively, you can always opt into using any other solo weapon that you feel may give you more damage, more ammo reserves, or better perks outright, such as Canis Major, Archon's Thunder, or Solar Scar. For stats, we want to focus as much effort into all the abilities as we intend to fully use our Elemental One mods to the fullest. Mods such as Phantom Might will be heavily used throughout the entirety of the build, and we want to keep that damage number up as much as possible. So Discipline, Intellect and Strength all have further use, and how you go about it does not matter one bit, as you will not be restricted down to just one area this time. Now although I have Discipline as high as 70, you don't actually need to reach that high of a level, as you have the Elemental One mods extra bonuses, being constantly provided to you, and you also have the Sunspots as well, that will be periodically produced. Having anything higher than 50 means you tend to use the grenades a lot, and for that I would expect you to have the Elemental Ordnance mod available, so you can make full use of the regenerations. We then have Intellect at 50 and Strength at 50, which both can stay comfortably at, as mods such as Absolution can further support our current build within the background. Now as we are extensively using Elemental War mods, Elemental Heavy builds can get away with low stats as long as you are able to produce the required amount of ability energy to make it all up. As mentioned, Elemental Ordnance will greatly benefit the build if we spec a lot into grenades, while mods such as Elemental Armaments will allow my weapon, such as the Vex, to be able to produce wells on the fly. Add in Font of Might for increased damage and the Particle Deconstruction mod for a global debuff, and the Vex is able to pretty much delete combatants from existence. We do also have the Elemental Time Dilation mod, which will extend Font of Might duration from 10 seconds to 13 seconds which we can increase the more mods I have, and can be very reliable if you want to do more damage for longer periods. And then I have the Power Preservation mod, which will allow me to produce more orbs of power via super, like a lion in heat, and please don't ask me why I know that. And we do have the Fire and Ice mod, which can also give us a varied amount of wells from defeated champions, and it's very helpful when you're able to melt champions in a matter of seconds. A lot that's been requested is mainly down to mod selection rather than stats, as a subclass in general is already handy for ability regeneration on the get-go. As long as you get the main basics down, filling in the rest of the mods is very easy for both new or old players, as not much requirements is absolutely needed to make this build in general work. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, now here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For Head, we have Maya Intellect, Power Preservation, and Elemental Time Dilation mod. Arm, we have Maya Discipline, Fastball, and Elemental Armaments mod. A chest, we have Intellect, Kakas of Dampner Times 2, and Elemental Orders mod. Leg, we have Maya Discipline, Absolution, Invigoration, and Font of Might mod. Mark, we have Maya Discipline, Parkour Deconstruction, and Fire and Ice mod. Not surprisingly, this build is very strong when we have all the required buffs constantly active and can be very useful for the most hardest and toughest content to participate in. Just like Devil's Rune, the more kills we get with the weapon, the quicker we are able to dish out a huge amount of damage once we are fully stacked, and from there we can one-shot the majority of combatants via body shots alone, although precision hits are more preferred. Useful if you plan to use this in PvP in general. The ease of use of the Vex and it being a full auto fusion makes it highly desirable for endgame content as not only does it hit hard like a fusion to the near fusion do, but it can also activate the particle deconstruction mod for that major debuff on all combatants. Given how much rounds it keeps within this magazine and how you can spread the solo effects by increasing the stacking damage or path of burning steps per kill each mate, so is just how broken the weapon is on a large scale. I'm talking a weapon that is capable of carrying you from start to finish without ever needing to swap to your secondary or heavy, since it hits just as hard as either one. Adding in Phantom Might for that 25% damage buff and the numerous amounts of ways to create wells will provide the user a near indefinite boost of pure raw power that truly hits the line of sci-fi fantasy play, and 
that pretty much what players mainly crave for. We don't even have the catalyst for the weapon for even more war damage increasements, and yet the weapon is capable of deleting champions within a full mag, as long as you have stunned them of course. The overall appeal of the build will suit those that want to show off how strong they are and how their damage can keep on growing in a matter of seconds, while at the same time offering players a way to look into how far the effects can go when properly decked out. Like the Devil's Ruin, which are both kind of similar in the way they are designed for increasing damage to be more and more, thanks to the infinite ammo buff and the seasoned anti champions mods focus, these similar weapons will see a huge increase in the performance of escalating damage and deleting combatants in a single hit or two, which is very useful as of now with Grandmasters being released and players needing methods that can both support but also hit hard with little effort. However, downside to such a build is that not a lot of people have the Vex to fully see where I'm coming from, and since there aren't any weapons that are similar to the Vex except for perhaps the Devil's Ruin, the experience may be lost on some. This shouldn't put you off though as the build itself will offer you ways to create your very own empowered solo build, whether you have the Vex or not. That shouldn't stop your creativity at all. All you need to do is think outside the box and generally see where it goes from there. So if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.